All barn doors work in the same basic principle. In the most general sense, we're gonna mount a track up here and we're gonna put these hangers on here. The hangers will attach to the door and the door will swing back and forth. Ideally, a barn door should be four inches taller and four inches wider than your opening. The hangers, these are gonna mount on the door and they will hang on the track. So we have to figure out how and where these mount on the door. We also have to figure out what the bottom guide is going to be. With a barn door, you have a bottom guide and that keeps the door from flopping around like this. So the easiest way to do this is to lay the door down, get your hangers and take some measurements. Based on the size and the style of the hanger, they have to be mounted to the door in a particular location. That's because with most barn door hardware, they give you a piece of hardware that mounts on the top of the door and that prevents the door from being able to jump off of the track in case someone banged it or there was an earthquake or something like that. So your track is gonna be around here and your hanger is gonna go on the track right here. Can't just be up like this nor can it be right up against the door right there. With this particular hardware, they want this top hole to be two and a quarter inches in from the edge, one and a half inches down from the top. We mark these right here. We're gonna drill these out and mount these, but not right now. So knowing where this goes will help us determine where we're going to mount the track on the wall. We want to have a half inch of space between the door and the floor. And we know that our door is 84 inches. So when I hold this in place, I'm pulling the track up into the wheel where it's going to be. From the top of the door to the center of this hole is an inch and a quarter. So if we want our door a half inch off the floor and our door is 84 inches, and then from the top of the door to the hole in our track is an inch and a quarter, Got an inch and a quarter plus 84 plus a half inch is 85 and three quarters inches. So this hole in our track has to be 85 and three quarters inches off the floor. In addition to knowing the height at which we install this, we need to know where it goes on the wall as far as this is concerned. Disregard these two holes. These two holes are used if you are connecting two tracks together. This is a 72 inch track, which is the minimum needed for a 36 inch door. Most barn doors come with this bumper mechanism. It slides on, it has these Allen screws here that fasten it. So when the door is in place and it's hanging, it bumps up against this so that it can't just roll off the end of the track. So these get added at the end, but we need to have enough room for them. So ideally, the end of the track would go at the end of the door. When our door is centered over the doorway, it's right here. We don't need to put the track right at the edge of the door. What we'll do is just line up the edge of the track with the edge of our casing. So with that in mind, I have the door in the open position. And let's put the track up there and just make sure we have enough room. The track does not quite go all the way to the end but it doesn't have to go to the end of the door. It just has to go to the wheel. So with our line drawn, the wheel is gonna go right to the end of the track right there. Cheat the track over an inch. We can get the bumper on the end. We have just enough room to get it on right there. Another thing we could do is bring the wheels in more. So instead of putting our screws right on this line, we'll put the edge of the hanger on that line. That's better. That's why you figure this stuff out before you start drilling holes and screwing things together. So we'll put this track just in a half inch from the edge of the casing. Instead of mounting our wheels here, we're gonna mount them right there. And that will be fine. Another thing we'll do outside is install the pull and the handle. So we need to know where these go. Some people will just use a pull for both sides, some people will use a handle and a pull. Now outside here, there's no obstructions, so you can use the handle and pull it back and forth because the doorknobs in this house are all at 36 inches from the floor, which is standard. I've marked this line at 35 and a half because our door is gonna be 
a half inch off the ground. Now I'm gonna put the pull on the other side. Now we're on the inside, and here's our mark at 35 and a half will be the middle of our pull. And of course, you want it to be on the correct side of the door. The bottom guide keeps the door from moving around in this direction. Sometimes you can buy these L-shaped or U-shaped that go on the floor and the door just glides between them. Sometimes they mount to the baseboard. You get a U-shaped piece of metal that mounts to the baseboard. Sometimes they even have a wheel on it. It screws into the baseboard and it has a wheel out here and the thing glides through. Those are the easiest things to install. This comes with this type of bottom guide. And so that is gonna get mounted to the floor. And that means you're gonna have to cut a channel in the bottom of the door that is that big. Some barn doors come with that channel cut, but if you're buying a custom door or just buying a door off the rack like this, which isn't a barn door per se, you're gonna have to cut that channel, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. We decided we want our pull right here. So I'm putting the edge at two and a half inches. I wanna go right about there and right about there. I wanna cut wider than this thing, but not so wide that we make a hole like this. So I wanna take out this box. I like to put the tape down because it'll protect the door against the base plate of my router. And it also makes it a no brainer. I know I can't cut into that blue tape. Now, when you're cutting a bottom channel, put the fence on your router. Do not try to do this freehand. It's not gonna work. So I've got my channel mark. I need to go as deep as this line. When you're starting this, you have to come in from the outside. If I started at the other end, I don't wanna run my router down here and then push it out the end because I could blow out this wood. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go down to the end, but I'm gonna stop just before I get to the end. And when I get to the other end, I'm gonna put the router outside and come in from the outside. And I'm only cutting a quarter inch deep. You don't wanna to try to cut this whole thing. It'll burn up your bit and you could blow out the wood very easily. So go a little bit at a time, quarter inch maximum. Yeah, we've done one good pass. I'm gonna clean this out. We'll take the bit down another quarter inch and do another pass. One last thing I'll do is just hit these edges with a little sandpaper. So these are the spacers. They go between the track and the wall. And this wide part goes against the wall. And they give you these lag screws and a washer. We'll go through there and that will go through. And this screws into the wall. If there's an, an inch of drywall or plaster, you don't really have much screw into the stud. And sometimes you don't always hit those studs perfectly square. Even if you do, when you tighten this thing down, it can sometimes suck into the drywall a little bit. And especially with a heavy door, over the course of time, this thing can start to bend like that. It doesn't pull out. What happens is that bottom starts caving into the drywall as the weight of the door pulls down. And if it just drops that door by a quarter inch, that can cause the door to start dragging on the floor. And that's a combination of the screw not being long enough and this thing just being too narrow and there's just not enough support on the drywall. So here's what I do. I just buy a board that's you know three and a half inches by a half inch thick. Cut it to the same length as the track and I'll mount it on the wall first. And then we mount this on there and this will not push into the wood. Another thing you can do is put big washers behind here, but those don't always work and they don't look great. And if you've already damaged the drywall a little bit, those washers will just exacerbate the problem. So now I've got my board on and instead of using the four inch screws that they give you, I use these big lag screws. I get these construction lag screws and I even spray paint them black so they match. And now between that and our spacer, look at that. We've got plenty of room. Before we mount the track, we're gonna cut this board to the same length as the track 
Mark all of your studs from the end of the doorway there to the end of your track, however you do that. Now I've cut this board to the correct length and I put a piece of tape here on the casing so I know where this board goes. It already has holes in it because when I shot that, the camera wasn't rolling. So I had to take it apart, we're shooting it again. That's how much I care. So with your board in place, go to your stud locations and draw lines so you know where all the studs are. And then what we're gonna do is take this down you got to keep this tape on here because you want to know where this board goes each time. Now we're going to put this down on the ground. We're going to put our track on it and see where the holes line up and where we will have to drill new holes. You're going to have to drill holes in this track because the holes that they pre-drill are not going to line up with your studs. One or two might, but not all of them. So for example, that one lined up, that one lined up. There's no hole there. This was the original hole of the track. This is the one I had to drill. This was the original hole in the track, and this is the one I had to drill. Now I'm gonna transfer these lines to the track. I flipped the board over, because I don't wanna damage the nice side of the board. Now just a couple nails in here. That'll just hold it in place. Now I'm gonna get this thing level. So I just made a mark here and it's in the center of the board. So now I'm gonna drill a pilot hole through there into the stud. I'm gonna use one of the lag screws that they provided and I'm just gonna put it in a little bit. Now I'm gonna swing my track over and get it level. With that attached, I can push it right up against the track and get it level. That's perfectly level. Make my hole there, make my hole there. Now I can drill those and I know I'm gonna be good. Got the spacer and my screw. And with this washer head, you don't need a washer. I'm not gonna suck it all the way down. I'll do that at the end. Of course, remember, you're getting that wide side against the board. They're all snug down. Turn the level on here again. If you didn't get them level, back one off or back two off, and you can cheat them a little bit. And if you had to, you could even make your hole a little bit bigger so you could move this thing around. Now we're gonna mount the hangers. We decided that instead of having them here, we're gonna line up the edge with this line. Now they'll give you two size bolts. It's for an inch and three quarters door. This is for an inch and three eighths door. And there's a washer for each side. This domed decorative nut goes on the outside of the door. I've seen people put the decorative nuts on the back side of the door, ends up hitting the casing. Let's throw it up there on the track and see how it works. Sometimes you're in a space where you can put the door on the end of the track and slide it right in. Sometimes you have to lift it up and drop it down. These things are super heavy. Sometimes you need two people, but what I've done with really heavy doors is put it up close like this and then just tilt one end up and drop it down and lift the other end up and drop it down. It rolls very nicely. It's not hitting anything and it stays. Then we put it in the closed position and it stays. That's what we want. And also we want to look at our distance. See between the head of our screw and the casing, sometimes those rubs, sometimes people will have really thick casing and you need to do one of these boards anyway. And that's something you should look at before you even start the job. But we've got plenty of clearance there. So this works great. So now let's look at our bottom. We put our floor guide in here and you see that has enough clearance. 
and that's going to keep the door nice and steady. Now, I don't want to put the floor guide in now. I don't want to do that until I put the real door on there, but obviously you can see how that goes. The bottom guide goes in in conjunction with the bumpers. Get the door centered in the closed position. And you want this bottom guide to be hidden. So I'll just put it right under the door just so it's hidden. So the edge of the bottom guide is gonna be even with the blue tape and we're gonna line it up right there. You wanna let the door just hang in its natural position and that's where the guide should go. You don't wanna put a lot of pressure on that. Now, since that's where the door is gonna be in its closed position, we can put this bumper in. So slide that on till it touches that and we'll move the door out of the way. So I'm gonna tighten both of these down. They provide the Allen wrench for you. And now that door cannot roll off the end of the track. So now what we'll do is move the door to the open position. And we know we want the guide right there. So let's move this back because we always want the guide to be hidden. That's where we want it. So I'm not going to attach the guide right now because I'm going to wait to do that when I get the final door. But since that's where I want it, what I would do is push the door out of the way. Then I can screw that in right there. Once it's screwed in, move it back to that position. Then I come up here and I install that bumper right there and I screw that in. So with that end bumper in place, the door bumps and can't go off the track. And when it's fully open, our floor guide is hidden. When it's fully closed and hits that bumper, our floor guide is still hidden. Now, of course, it's jumping around now because I have not attached it. And because we did all the hard work outside, this part is very easy. So now I've got a nice pull. And for the handle, you know, I've got 36 inches off the floor. I will just center that up and drill and put in my screws. I don't want to do it because I don't want to lose these screws. I'm going to save it for the real door, but you get the point. That's the easiest part of the job. This is the anti-jump disc. And you'll notice that screw hole is not in the center. That's so you can install it while the door is in place. So here's how it works. You try to get it directly under the wheel or as close as you can. And then line up that screw hole in a spot where you can get to it. Long as a part of the disc is underneath the track, you'll be okay. And then they give you these little screws to put in there. So I put a long extension bit on there so I can get it in. And then once that's in place, as you can see, if the door were to jump, it hits so the wheel can't go off. So make sure this is the last thing you do. 